Hello everyone, I tried to do this yesterday on a live stream talking about how BDU is asking for customer information from Rarebreed in the Rarebreed versus BDU patent infringement lawsuit covering the FRT15 and the knockoff, in some people's opinion, wide open trigger from BDU. This had some claims going around from certain people that kind of misrepresented the information and I just wanted to talk about what's going on because some people are saying, yo, it seems like BDU wants customer information to be public from Rarebreed and that's really not the claims that are actually being made. We're going to be talking about and we're going to be showing some information from the motion filed by Big Daddy Unlimited to compel Rarebreed to give them some customer information and we're going to be showing some of the email chain that is used as evidence in that motion and we're just going to be talking about what is actually being said. Now I appreciate everyone that supports this channel. You guys know like, comment, subscribe, links down in the description, right below the like button, all that stuff definitely does help. So I want to cover some of the claims that I saw that were wrong real quick. So one of the claims I saw was that Big Daddy Unlimited wants customer information to be made public and that they want all the customer information. Well, that's wrong, partly because all they actually are asking for in this motion is to provide, or is for Rarebreed to provide the customer service emails to Rarebreed with no redactions of the customer information because during the discovery phase of this lawsuit, apparently Rarebreed had been sending the customer service emails regarding things like issues with triggers, people wanting to become dealers. Anytime someone contacted Rarebreed about the FRT15 trigger, they wanted to see those emails. And Rarebreed provided that information with the emails, addresses, phone numbers, and any contact information redacted. BDU claims that they want those, and we'll talk about why. But the only ask is for that the customer service emails being provided to Big Daddy Unlimited not be redacted. Now, this information would only be viewable by the lawyers. It would not be viewable by Big Daddy Unlimited as a whole or the McKnights. Some people are afraid of this information even being somewhat close to them, and I understand your concerns. Many people have concerns with the McKnights and how they run their organizations, and the fact that they have been involved with various scandals in the past year, two years, it seems. So a lot of people don't feel comfortable with that information being on that side. So I understand the concern. Now, the other claim that is made in the motion, and it seems like this claim might also be being made by Big Daddy Unlimited, is that Rarebreed wants Big Daddy Unlimited's customer information. And I believe those claims are actually made in the motion that they are saying that Rarebreed is asking for their information but not providing it the other way. The actual statements that are made, I'm going to read this from an email. This is to Big Daddy Unlimited's lawyer from Rare Breed's lawyer. It says, We have not asked for BDU customer identities, although I have already explained a basis for which we might request the identities of dealers who purchased large quantities of infringing triggers. Nevertheless, Rare Breed is not willing to divulge customer private customer inf identifying information. So it's very clear that Rarebreed is doing their best to hold to their digital shredding policy that they have implemented. Now, I think many of you might know by now, it might be public information, that Rarebreed does not keep customer information for people that's purchased a FRT15 trigger. When they purchase an FRT15 trigger, if they don't do anything with that information after a while, let's say nobody returns it or whatever, apparently that information is wiped except for the date and the amount. Any customer identifying information like name, address, phone number, email, that kind of stuff, all wiped, all redacted in some way. How their digital shredding policy works specifically, I don't know, but it seems as if the only thing they keep is a record of the sale and the date that that sale happened, not any of the customer information. So the reason that Big Daddy Unlimited is asking for this information is so that they can assess the claims for damages and make counter arguments. One of the big points that I believe I saw in this motion was they wanted to be able to determine whether or not Rarebreed could meet consumer demand so as to satisfy its claims for lost profits. So the reason they're saying that is because I know many of you probably are aware that the FRT15 trigger when it first came out uh, and still to this day was a hot commodity. People really wanted to get their hands on these triggers. They wanted to get one. They had a long t long waiting period to get them. They did not do pre-orders. It was basically just, hey, there's some in stock. Go get them if you want them. 
So I believe the argument that they're trying to make BDU is they're trying to say that because people were waiting so long and the demand was so high and the supply was so low and they were marketing it in such a way that they could not have met the demand even if the wide open trigger did not exist. Even if a competing trigger that was an infringing trigger did not exist, there couldn't be any demands made for damages because they wouldn't have been able to sell them a trigger anyway. I believe that's what they're saying here. Now, one of the other claims that I see in this is Big Daddy Unlimited in their motion to compel them to give this information from the customer service emails, very clear what they're actually asking for. I believe that they have said multiple times that Rare Breed is only withholding this information to avoid social media backlash. And now I believe if we read the actual emails from them, so in the actual email to Big Daddy Unlimited, the lawyers from Rare Breed actually said, however, before seeking a court order to compel customer identity or to contact Rare Breed customers, I implore you to consult your client about the business consequences of such a move. I expect the reaction of the industry customers to be swift and harsh. And yeah, you know, personally, I would not want Big Daddy Unlimited to have my information if I purchased and contacted one of them. So put yourself in the potential customer's shoes. Let's say you purchased a trigger from Big Daddy Unlimited or from Rare Breed directly, and then you contacted Rare Breed. Would you want, would you want Big Daddy Unlimited to have your customer information? Would you want them to know your address? Would you want them to know that you purchased one of these triggers? I would say if I was one of those people, I would say no, I would not want that record to exist. And I would not trust Big Daddy Unlimited to have that information after they've been involved in one, potentially almost two gun buyback events. The whole fact that they have, in my opinion, knocked off the FRT-15 trigger while importing them from out of the country and being kind of shady with how they dealt with Rare Breed in that situation. It just, I personally would not want to be involved with companies that are run by people who run pyramid schemes. I'm sorry, multi-level marketing schemes, oh, multi-level marketing companies, I'm sorry. Did not want to slander anyone there. I'm very clear that was my opinion. I would not want my information with them in any way that was avoidable. So what they were saying is that the only reason that they were withholding this information was to avoid backlash from Rare Breed, when in reality what they were actually saying was if Big Daddy Unlimited tries to force this information out in the public, it would not be good for their business. So if anything, it could be conceived as a threat as opposed to a excuse for not doing it. They were saying, hey, you don't want to do this. You don't want to ask for this. Now, I spoke with Lawrence from Rare Breed about this, and he said that he would be interested potentially in having a sit down conversation, either <laughs> hosted by me, I don't know why they would want it hosted by me, um, or someone with McKnight and DeMonico, Rare Breed and BDU, both agreeing to not ask for customer information. He said that if they could both agree to that, they would both, he would be willing to not ever ask for customer information. So I would love to see BDU not ask for this information, but I understand why they would want it. They want the customer information so that they can contact those customers to prove their claims that BDU was not or should not be held liable for damages monetarily because Rare Breed could not have produced the triggers to satisfy the demand anyway. I understand that. So one of the big points that got taken out of context was plaintiffs reply, it was point six I think in here on page seven, plaintiffs replied that they redacted information that specifically identifies a purchaser. Plaintiffs threatened to request cut information on defendants customers should defendants press the issue. However, I believe that the point that they're referencing in the emails it's very clear that Rare Breed was not asking for that information. They were saying that they have more of a reason to ask. Now, I understand how that would be perceived as a threat, but in my opinion, from what I was reading, it seemed more, and the conversations I've had with Lawrence, it seemed more that they were potentially saying that we have a reason to want to be able to contact your dealers and distributors who sold a ton of these if you guys are unable to pay because it seems as if uh, BDU is about to go bankrupt at any moment, who knows, 
but uh, that's the rumors that I am hearing thrown around. So they were ask, saying that they have more of a reason to ask, but they were not currently asking for them, whereas BDU is filing a motion in the courts to force Rarebreed to give that customer information to BDU. I hope that cleared some things up. BDU is not trying to dox everybody. They are trying to get information from customer service emails to prove that maybe there wasn't enough supply, maybe there were issues with the product so that they should not be held liable for damages in this copyright infringement issue. So it's, uh, it's not what people were initially making it out to be. It's fairly simple. Hopefully, if you have any questions, you can just use the link down in the description. That description is right below the like button again. Um, you can use the link down in the description to view the files that I'm looking at without having to create an account for like Pacer or something like that so that you can look at them and read them for yourself. You guys know the drill. Have fun, be safe, stay dangerous. Peace.